So, um, programmatic advertising. So, as this is a film festival, so please let me just allow to do like a 15 seconds uh, TV spot on Platform 161. So, what are we? What are we doing? We actually digital marketing demand side platform uh, with focus on customization. We founded 2008 in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. So, pure European uh, company, worldwide five offices. We just opened up three months ago in uh, in New York, uh, our fifth office. We're servicing right now 150 clients. Um, mainly advertisers, media agencies, and also publishers. And we're delivering ads in more than 100 countries. Okay, so uh, back in the old days, if you think about uh, media booking uh, back, back in the old days, so um, you probably know the show Mad Men, and there was actually one, uh, one interesting uh, episode where one, one guy, Harry Crane, actually uh, kind of invented the media booking. Because actually I came up uh, to Dan Draper at that time and said, uh, you know what, why, why, are we, why are we only doing, let's say, layout stuff and not really do the bookings in the media? And then, booking, media, TV spots, who needs that? So actually that was kind of, you know, this guy was actually laughed at at the beginning. And actually right now, if you see that evolving, that actually is bringing the march into the big advertising networks because without media, they would be dead anyway. So uh, that actually, Mad Men is a really interesting uh, thing in the back old days. And, uh, and then it actually, you know, then um, online media came along. So this was the first uh, media banner in '94 on, on Hot Wired. Interesting, you know, how actually how it looked like. Uh, the funny thing is that not even the advertisers displayed there. So there was AT and T, uh, and uh, the click rate was amazing, 44%, which is 100 times more than actually the average click rate today. So these were the big, big, uh, the good old days. Um, if you think about uh, how actually media booking was done uh, at that time and today there's not even a big difference. So um, how is media booking uh, done uh, mainly? So mainly the publisher sends a sales representative um, to a lunch or to a meeting with the big uh, network agencies like Group M, Harvest, Omnicom and all that. And then they sit over lunch and kind of, you know, say, well, you know, uh, how was your wife? How was your kids? And let's play golf. And uh, they kind of, you know, kind of related to each other and, uh, and made, made business. And uh, that actually um, is uh, something which is uh, not always, you know, sure if it's really was really a good idea and it's really in the best of the interest of the advertiser. And uh, so basically the process was, um, uh, and still is a part time, that's uh, actually a website like createsports.com or very interesting news, it's just to make up uh, examples. Um, they actually came to the agency and said, well, my, my website is the greatest because we have so many good people visiting that site and they, they won't last on the website for a very, very long time. Um, the thing is actually, it's all based on assumptions. You just don't know who are the visitors on the website are. And it's unclear if they sell you 20 million impressions, is that 20 times uh, one person or is it like 10 times uh, um, uh, two million, all that stuff. So it's just very unclear if it's the same or a different users. You have only one price actually for a contact. Every contact is valued the same price. And also it's based on past personal experience. So um, if you think uh, experience, uh, if that would matter, then actually this guy, uh, you probably know him, what he was uh, uh, famous for. Um, when he actually invented what he was famous for, he was, how old? 26. So he's actually a millennial when he actually uh, changed the world of physics. So if you think about experience and you think about uh, you know, young target groups, uh, that's also a nice, nice example to, um, uh, to, to picture. Uh, I'm not gonna you know, bother you with uh, all the millennial stuff. So actually everybody under 30 and 35 is considered a millennial. They also have this crazy behavior. Let's just uh, skip that and come to the technology part. So technology is now coming into play. We talked about the media booking and we talked about how media booking was done in the past. And now everything uh, is a little bit different because we have the chance to actually do things differently. And also that means we have more possibilities actually in the market to actually conduct uh, media bookings uh, in a different way. And um, if you think about uh, the whole idea between brains and algorithms and uh, machine learning stuff, uh, there's always this kind of the idea that the brain is still, let's say, superior to algorithms. Um, and that actually was, you know, the first time in, in history kind of, kind of reversed. Uh, actually, Deep Blue, uh, 1996, uh, was actually winning against uh, um, uh, the chess world champion Kasparov. So it showed actually for the first time that a machine, an algorithm, you know, kind of, you know, fed with all the information of the past uh, um, uh, plays actually could, could beat uh, really somebody who's really, really very smart. 
And, um, and so um, the brain basically, and it's, I think that's also proven scientist, uh, um, scientific, scientific uh, proof, that actually is better for creative thinking and uh, for rational decisions, actually algorithms and machines are much better. So um, I don't know who knows this example, the bat and the ball. So this is a small game, so just uh, if we have more time, I can just you know, dip a little bit uh, deeper into that. But I just uh, one, one short uh, riddle for you. So um, if, uh, if a bat and a ball is together $1.10, so bat and ball $1.10, and the bat is $1 more than the ball, how much is the ball? Oh, you're so smart. That's uh, actually, you killed my whole thing, but it's okay. Uh, normally, uh, if you really uh, kind of you know put that in a, in a certain way, so you say, okay, like one dollar more than the ball, and one dollar ten, so of course that must be uh, must be ten cents. So that that shows kind of that sometimes our brain is a little bit uh, a little bit biased in a way that we we tend to think that we know things, but in the end we don't. So. Um, uh, that's uh, a nice example. That's actually from a book uh, from David uh, Ka Kahneman, uh, Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow. A very, very interesting book. I can really recommend it. So how is uh, the whole thing, uh, real-time bidding, programmatic now actually um, uh, being, uh, being conducted? So actually, it's not really complicated um, uh, as it uh, may, may seem. Um, and uh, now actually one thing is important that now actually the advertising decision, decision, the decisions are based on real-time data and algorithms. So it's not sitting over lunch with a guy and kind of, you know, kind of like him or you don't like him, uh, but actually you have data, like first-party data, which is your own data on your website, campaign, data, campaign, da uh, campaign data, third-party data, behavioral data, weather, time of day, which device, all that stuff. So we put that all together. And then at, at the end, um, you kind of you know, make yourself uh, um, uh, a conclusion out of it. So programmatic advertising is basically machine-to-machine -machine automation of media transaction between demand and the sell side based on data and machine learning decisioning. And then actually also brings totally new uh, players into the ecosystem, uh, demand side platform and supply side platform. So if you think in, uh, in the back old days, we have an advertiser and we have a publisher and we maybe have a media agency in between. And now actually um, the supply side platform is offering the buy side, the advertiser through a, uh, through a technology provider, the demand side platform, all kinds of contacts, all kinds of impressions and it's instantly offering impressions to the demand side platform. And the demand side platform is uh, actually assessing all that data which is, available, which is made available to them uh, in their own algorithm and decides if they want to bid on that, if they want to buy it, and if they want to buy it, how much they want to bid on it. And that's actually um, uh, basically the choice. Uh, the choice is uh, on, on the DSP side. So the algorithm determines the individual value and the price for the user. So the Algorithm decides whether this is really an impression or a contact I want to buy because it really, you know, is a value to me. And then, if you say yes, then to what price? So, just to give an example. Maybe it's a little bit uh, theoretical, but uh, if you say you're a film uh, studio and you know that somebody has downloaded 20 times um, in the last uh, two weeks uh, a movie, so that user might be super interesting for you because you think, okay, that user might also buy my movie and also download it. Um, and then actually it's independent from where that user at that particular time is. It could be on a mobile gaming site, could be on Facebook, could be on a news site, on a sports site. You just buy that user. So the user is in the center. And then you value what you think the user is, is, uh, is valuable for you. And uh, how is the whole price uh, determined? And that's a really funny, funny thing. It's super, super fast. Um, uh, actually, if you type in, let's say, cnn.com and press enter, in that moment when you press enter, an auction takes place about the ads you're about to see in less than 20 milliseconds. So that's all done uh, technically. And uh, essentially, as I just said, all the supply side platforms, they push all their contacts they have. Essentially, that's all the inventory in the world. They just push all the time to the demand side platform. And the demand side platform says, OK, this, val this, this guy is, uh, is, value for, is a value for me for uh, 89 cents. Another says, well, it's one, one, uh, one euro 12. And the third one says, okay, it's $1.75. And then at the end, who wins? Of course, the highest bidder wins. And it's a so-called second price auction, like you know from the eBay model. So actually, it's one cent more than the, second, um, than the, than the guy who actually uh, bid the second price. And it's super, super fast. And that's, of course, very, very efficient. 
And uh, is it relevant? Yes, it is relevant. Uh, if you just compare over the last uh, years, that's uh, really some, it's a really, really uh, amazing uh, fast growing market. Um, it really grew a lot, especially also in Europe. And it's been what, what kind of implication does that have also for, for the players in the market? So size is not important anymore. So if you have like thousands of websites, thousands of uh, access to all the inventory, it doesn't matter because technically all the inventory is there. So to, to have to own a website is totally, I wouldn't say useless, but it's close to useless. So um, just to uh, sum up, maybe three things to, to remember. So programmatic advertising will become the standard and will not be limited to online media. We have the uh, penetration in programmatic advertising uh, next year. Uh, it's, uh, there are different uh, estimations, of course, that 50% uh, of all online media revenues, 60 of online video revenues, and even 75 of all mobile media revenues will be traded programmatically. Um, digital out of home, like the screens uh, you see everywhere on bus stations, central stations, wherever. Uh, we actually did the first European uh, digital out of home campaign end of 2014, Amsterdam. And also other, um, other media like print, uh, TV, radio, native content, even Spotify is now actually um, uh, offers the chance to, uh, to programmatically buy uh, their listeners on, uh, on Spotify. So that's really, really uh, moving, moving on. Transparency. Transparency is key. Um, so if you look for independent advice, uh, if you go to a BMW dealership and say and ask him, so what do you think is the best car? Well, I mean, he probably is going to uh, kind of uh, talk to you into a BMW. And that's actually, of course, uh, the, the whole idea. Uh, it's very, very important if you kind of, you know, deal with the whole thing of technology decision making. Is that guy you're talking to really independent? And is that really transparent what he's doing? And is there maybe a hidden margin somewhere which, uh, which you don't know or you just uh, want to know? So, um, and can you be transparent, like a, to a rhetorical question, if you are buyer and seller at the same time? So if you're actually offering something to the world to buy, at the same time you have a technology which can actually buy stuff. So what that implicates is of course pretty clear. So of course you're not independent, you're not really the guy who can uh, choose and uh, you probably choose uh, some decisions which are not in the best of, uh, of the advertiser. Um, there are some companies like Google or Nexus, they're actually both, they're demand side platform and supply side platform and they combine both, they actually buy by, uh, from, their own, uh, from their own inventory. And also the big networks, they're also in between, between like the, you know, the companies I just mentioned, between the supply side platform, demand side platform in the middle, are they really independent? Are they really transparent what they do? Um, one size does not fit all, since this is also um, a film festival. This is a very bold statement, I'm very proud of that. Um, Europe is not USA. Um, so, um, and that's actually, it's a very, uh, very interesting in one, one respect. Um, I'd actually talked to a, to a film producer a couple of months ago and he told me, I'm not really in the, um, uh, too much into that uh, screening, but he told me that in the States actually, they, uh, when a movie is actually coming out or being released, they invite all kinds of focus group, like Latinos, Afro-Americans, East Coast, West Coast, New York, Miami, and then at the end they kind of you know, figure out how everything uh, puts together, maybe they kind of edit something, and then if the whole movie is done and the movie is uh, ready, then they say, okay, now, rest of the world, this is the movie. And uh, actually, there's no chance, of course, for, for a certain country like, uh, like, um, like, like Germany or France or Australia or Africa to, to edit something, to change something. So um, that means, actually, the rest of the world is getting out of a box, started a standardized uh, movie. And that's actually uh, very interesting because if you look at the film, uh, let's say, industry in the in, uh, in US, in Hollywood, and also in Europe, I mean, in Europe, you have people probably you even, don't even heard of, uh, Til Schweiger, it's a German actor, uh, actually very strange uh, humor, probably that movie will not work in France ever because it's just totally different. Uh, and also Preto Almodovar and uh, Bruno Ganz from, from Switzerland. So those, these kind of um, movies and uh, productions are not, they're just limited to their own country in a way. So that, of course that has certain implications that um, First of all, you don't have the big budgets and you have to be smarter than others. You really have to adapt to the local markets. You have to really understand what the market is actually um, uh, all about. And uh, that actually also, if you compare that and uh, transfer that to technology, it also does mean that actually one size does not fit all requirements. 
So you cannot have one technology which is standardized and developed in the States and just roll it over to Europe and you, can ex you cannot expect that actually that works in, in, every, in every country. So um, you have to customize, you have to adapt and you have really they have to put uh, focus on that. And um, just to conclude that, so there are several aspects where Europe is not USA. In terms of population and market size, they're pretty much, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, um, uh, size, uh, the same. But of course, they have you know, different laws on data privacy, which is important in, in ad technology uh, and standardization and uh, adaption. And also human storytelling is totally different in Europe than, than in the States. So I think there are several aspects which actually make a difference. And that's really a really good chance also for the for, the, for Europe, uh, for Europe technology, also in, in those uh, kind of things, in the, like for programmatic, to make a difference. So, um, just want to conclude uh, that uh, don't look back, look forward, take your chances, and good luck with your decision. Thanks. <laughs>